In the heart of the celestial expanse, where time and space entwine in a dance of cosmic wonders, a revelation unfolds, a whisper from the cosmos that challenges the very fabric of our understanding. Imagine a reality where the notion of our mortal finitude becomes a mere illusion, where quantum theory unveils the potentiality of an eternal existence. This cosmic journey transcends the conventional confines of life and death, painting a portrait of an odyssey through the multiverse, a dimension known across cultures as the realm of the gods. As we navigate the intricate tapestry of quantum physics, we encounter the proposition that, beyond the veils of our physical forms, consciousness persists. The cosmic voyage takes us into the unknown, where the concept of eternal life gains newfound depth. Quantum physicists present evidence that suggests our essence endures, challenging preconceived boundaries and inviting us to contemplate a reality where life extends beyond the horizon of our understanding. Universal narratives where the cosmic tales of existence converge and diverge await your contemplation, transcending the limits of our mortal perceptions. The Holy Grail, the Philosopher's Stone, or the Divine Ambrosia are all believed to confer immortality. The theme of eternal life and immortality is addressed in many earthly cultures, each providing unique answers. In our Western culture, faith in life after death has almost disappeared. The Christian principle of a soul's journey to heaven, or in unfortunate cases to hell, has little presence in the collective psyche. Conversely, in Eastern cultures, the idea that the soul moves after death travels to dimensions where deities normally reside, and that souls return to earth in a new cycle of life is considered quite normal. There are countless individuals around the globe who have experienced near-death experiences or even claim to have crossed the threshold of the divine realms. In these dimensions, they come into contact with entities that manifest as angels and bring them back to earth. Often, these individuals experience spontaneous healing from serious illnesses or radically transform their lives as they gain a deeper understanding of who they truly are in the realms after death. Until now, all of these experiences were considered ideologies, fantasies, difficult to verify claims, or concepts tied to the religious sphere. However, quantum physics has now provided concrete proof of our real immortality. Have you ever imagined what it would mean to live forever here on Earth? Consider the possibility of manipulating your genes so that you can continue to rejuvenate or leave your body to transition to another dimension as pure information. The ability of living beings to reverse the aging process is evident in a small jellyfish that accomplishes this extraordinary feat. This example, though simple, illustrates what nature makes possible and teaches us to never exclude any possibility. Imagine if science could decipher this secret or program your genome to navigate up and down the age line, allowing you to live forever without experiencing the passage of time. You would be immortal and could still walk this earth in 1,000 or 10,000 years. Clues from quantum physics suggest that scholars may have discovered the key to immortality in the realm of the tiniest particles. Quantum mechanics initially revealed that light constitutes a fundamental building block of matter, with particles of light much smaller than atoms. These quanta can be further divided into multiple smaller particles, reaching a point where only pure information and energy remain as the true constituents of the universe. While energy can fluctuate in a state of absolute balance and physically disappear, information is eternal. Your bodies ultimately are made of matter composed of condensed light and information. After death, your information persists. Therefore, Australian quantum physicists have formulated it in these terms. If a forest burns, the trees, shrubs, and animals that inhabit it disappear in the physical world. However, at the quantum level, the forest persists as information and could be reconstructed if we possess the necessary knowledge to achieve this rematerialization. The forest could also disappear from our world. The information moves elsewhere, to another dimension or another part of the universe, and a new forest is created with the aid of information based on quantum mechanics. However, there is another theory that presents us with a completely new world, the theory of biocentrism. 
This theory, developed by American scientist Robert Lanza, fundamentally argues that it is not the universe that generates life, but rather life itself that shapes the universe. What we define as consciousness within ourselves was actually present from the beginning of everything. And today, almost 14 billion years later, consciousness is flowing through us humans. In truth, we humans are not limited to being bodies and brains, but consciousness that has appropriated or connected to a material form. According to Lanza's model, our brains and bodies act as modems, and what we perceive as observers or eyes is pure consciousness. The brain and body receive signals from the outside and translate them into life experiences and matter. If you are already familiar with quantum theory, you know that quanta can manifest as both waves and particles. The wave represents the unformed potential, while the particle becomes matter through observation. Consciousness is the observer. At the death of the brain and body, only the modem is destroyed, but the signals remain and could potentially be redirected or recycled into another host. In Lanza's biocentric view, life is the signal and continues without the body and brain acting as modems. Thus, consciousness creates the universe through us and not the other way around. Lanza's ideas emerged in the late 2000s and have been embraced in some circles while vigorously contested in others. For some, biocentrism provides a link between philosophical concepts of life and death in physics. For others, the theory is still too elusive and uncertain, with little or no evidence on the true nature of consciousness. Supporters also rely on the fine-tuning problem, which illustrates how many physical factors are necessary for life to emerge. Water, heat, oxygen, carbon compounds, and more must be carefully regulated for life to arise at all. All of this cannot be the result of coincidences, but seems to have been shaped for us or by us. Now, of course, one might wonder who created all this before humans were there as observers. Perhaps even dinosaurs contributed to the creation of matter through consciousness, as did early bacterial extinctions. Extensions of Lanza's theory assume that consciousness is omnipresent, living in you, in me, in plants, in animals, and even in materially inanimate life in the vast expanse of the cosmos. Intriguing conceptions like these vividly evoke animism present in many natural religions, which assert that everything that exists possesses a soul or even consciousness. Lanza's theories and some quantum models, as well as conceptions of life after death, demonstrate that consciousness transcends matter. This inevitably leads to a concept of life after death, or rather, to the realization that death is not possible in such a reality. Not when life is actually consciousness and not bound to matter, but rather an illusion. This is because life and consciousness are no longer tied to our bodies. If we strip away the body and the brain, consciousness disperses like a kind of energy throughout the entire universe or moves to other dimensions, continuing to exist in those contexts. In the mid 20th century, German physicist Burkhard Heim developed a model of reality based on 12 dimensions including supermaterial levels such as consciousness and even divine dimensions. Surprisingly, many unresolved mathematical formulas find solutions when considering 10 or more dimensions. In one of these dimensions, consciousness could act as a normal force, but currently, we do not have the means to detect or measure it. In the 17th century, René Descartes stated that the mind and body were fundamentally different substances the immaterial and thinking mind, the material and spatially extended body. Despite these differences, he believed they interacted in the pineal gland of the brain. During the Enlightenment, this view led to a separation between mind and body. Only now are medical scientists accumulating more and more evidence supporting the close connection between the two entities, with many physical illnesses, for example, having their origin in the mind. If we consider the possibility that consciousness can shape matter or, in other words, that consciousness can be condensed into matter, there is no separation. The particle is wave and vice versa. The body is consciousness and vice versa. The only gap lies in the fact that the physical body in the three-dimensional world has a limited lifespan due to aging. However, 
The case of the eternal jellyfish demonstrates that this process is not an intrinsic condition of life. Rather, all living things that age may simply follow a program, and anyone who succeeds in rewriting it one day will have found the key to eternal physical life on Earth. Land's idea of quantum immortality is not the only perspective that points in this direction. The quantum immortality model is based on the central concept of the multiverse developed by Hugh Everett's Many Worlds Interpretation. Quantum immortality postulates that every decision we make leads to the creation of a parallel universe. Imagine an infinite tree with branches where each branch represents a different path your life could have taken. Every decision, whether big or small, adds a new branch to the tree. While coexisting, these universes never intertwine but are all the result of our choices. It can be likened to being in an infinite maze of mirrors, each reflecting a different version of you based on the paths you have chosen in your life over the years. Science fiction authors have exploited the potential of this idea in novels and movies, demonstrating how seemingly insignificant choices can bifurcate into a parallel universe. The significance the multiverse could have for the afterlife poses another intriguing challenge. In the realm of quantum immortality, there may always emerge a point of divergence in the multiverse through which a person survives. Key studies, such as the double-slit experiment, have highlighted that all options remain open until observed. The multiverse theory suggests that consciousness could persist in other worlds after death on Earth, perhaps existing here and now in different dimensions without being aware of it. When the body ceases to live and your attention detaches from this world, you may become aware of an alternative existence in another plane and understand that your life has actually always been an illusion in the three-dimensional context. This conception aligns with Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, a conceptual model of quantum theory that posits the simultaneous mortality and immortality of the cat until someone with a specific mental state makes a measurement. In Eastern religions such as Hinduism, the multiverse is a long-known concept and is an integrated reality in people's consciousness. The Vedas outline various levels of materiality in subtle spiritual worlds. On these planes, comparable to other universes in the multiverse, entities recognized as deities, demons, or angelic beings exist. Human beings are endowed with an immortal soul capable of assuming different forms within the multiverse. If you enjoyed the video, I invite you to like and leave a comment. See you in the next episode of Universal Narratives.